How do, and welcome to Tractor Out Part 3. In this video I'm going to be making the steering for the Tractor Out project and I'm going to be using one of these fat bike tyre things um, for the front wheel. I'm going to have to make my own forks, I'm going to have to find some way of getting that to rotate around and I'm going to have to make some way of attaching the handlebars to a steering column to let it turn. So let's make a start. The forks are going to rotate around this 20mm shaft and this barrel uh, assembly here is going to be attached to the frame. It's going to be held in place with thrust bearings top and bottom and it's going to be a large 20mm nut holding everything in place. So the first thing to do is to make a start on this barrel. Got this large bar of steel from eBay and just bored it out to size to allow it to fit over the uh, main shaft. The thrust bearings are going to be held in place by these plates that sit top and bottom on the barrel. These are going to be plasma cut from sheet steel and then they'll be bored to allow the bearing races to fit in place. So we're boring a 20mm hole in the plate here. Then turn the shallow recess into this plate and this is just deep enough to allow the bearing race to sit flush with the top. So here's the steering barrel and the thrust bearing plates and the bearings themselves. The next thing that I need to do is to weld the uh, top and bottom plates to the barrel. So with the shaft that I'm actually going to be using for the uh, steering, just put one of these plates over it and then the barrel goes over the top to hold it in place during welding. The forks are going to be held together with these two steel plates. These are going to be 5mm steel and plasma cut, but before I commit to making them out of expensive sheet steel, I'm going to laser cut them from cheap MDF and make sure that everything fits. The wheel is going to be held in place with these plates that are going to be welded into slots cut into the tube. Again I need to make sure that the dimensions of these are in the right place so I'm going to 3D print a test piece of these before I commit to cutting steel and welding everything up. I designed these test pieces with a round bit on the end that will fit inside the fork tubes just to hold them in place while I do a check. So here are all the bits. I'm going to just put them all together now and then we can get them on the wheel and see if it actually fits. These fat tail things are really huge. I've got it clamped in the workbench here. I'm just bringing the forks over the top and then lining them up. Glad I cut these out of MDF rather than steel because I've got them out by about eight millimeters. So it's back to the CAD system to fix this. That's feeling pretty confident. I've got everything right now, so it's straight onto the plasma cutter to cut the plate out. Cutting a length from some bar, this is going to be one of the plates that the wheel bolts to. After cutting two of these out, I can send them up on the mill so I can cut the slot where the shaft of the wheel is going to go. I used a slipping saw to slot the forks. With everything set up on the workmate and everything held in place and it's going to be in the final assembly, I started welding.
And while I have everything together, I will do the thrust bearing plate into position. Now I'm putting the thread on the bar that's going to hold the thrust bearings in place. And you can see how this bar fits into the overall assembly. A final bit of welding to hold the 20mm shaft in position. So now it's time to put everything together. The lower bearing mount plate is already in place, so the first thing is the lower thrust bearing, then the upper thrust bearing raise, then the steering barrel, then the another bearing raise. A bit stiff there. Then the upper bearing and the upper bearing raise. Now at this point I've actually forgotten to put the upper bearing mount plate on, but I'll remember in a minute. There we go. And then finally the big nut on top to hold everything in place. And then a few adjustments of the top nut to make sure it's not too tight. And now we've got the forks complete. Time to mount them to the frame now. There's a couple of bent steel plates that are welded to the steering barrel and these in turn are going to be bolted to this huge plate that's attached to the frame. I'm not going to go into too much detail as to how I made these because I've already put a video on this which I've linked below. Plates were plasma cut from 4mm sheet steel and bent them to the right angle with my small brake. Use a small aluminium bar that's set to the right distance apart so I can get the plates in the right place. And then after tack welding them, I can start to fasten everything together. Here's the steering barrel clamped into place on the plates that are going to be held onto the frame. I'm going to bolt these on eventually so it's going to be nice and easy for me to take it apart. And it's also going to minimise the height of the thing when it's all been folded down. I'm trying to get everything positioned here. and I can get the mounting plates for the frame welded into position. This drawing's got the position of the holes that I need to drill into the barrel mounting plates. These are going to be M8 and they're going to be three of them on each side. So I'm going to get this piece of paper cut out and stuck onto the frame plates. So I've got everything in position I can drill both holes at once. A quick tap with the centre punch, make sure everything's going to be lined up nicely with the drill. And after drilling all the holes, I got some bolts in there to hold everything into place. So with all the wheels in place, I thought it might be an idea to try and sit on a thing and it, then it occurred to me that I wasn't entirely certain what the centre of gravity was and where it might even tip over. So let's give it a try. Of course, when the batteries are on and the motors are on, it'll be a lot heavier and the centre of gravity will be a lot lower than it is now. Basically, I've no idea whether it will fall over, so I'm going to carry on and see what happens. As I wasn't sure how long it would need to be, the threaded part of the steering column needs to be cut down to a reasonable size to fit the universal joint that's going on there. This universal joint will allow me to adjust the angle of the steering rod when I'm sitting down on the track. I've got a rough idea as to how long this rod's going to have to be, so I cut it to a reasonable length and I can trim it down if I need to. I'm drilling through here so I can put a bolt through to hold it in place. The handlebars are a standard bike fitting so I'm going to have to make an adapter to allow me to fit these on the 20mm rod. Turn down Beta Valley to fit the handlebar diameter. Then bore this out to 20mm to fit over the steering rod. 
then I cut a slit down the length of the adapter and finally parted it off on the lathe. So with a quick test fit of the adapter onto the steering rod it shows it's going to work pretty well but with a bit of persuasion. And this homemade adapter lets the handlebars fit really nicely onto the steering rod. And it's time for another test. What the sit down test did tell me is that your arms are going to get pretty tired holding up the handlebars and the steering rod all the time. So I've created this rest that's going to stand up from the frame and the steering rod will actually rest on the top of this. But it's also going to be mounted to these plates that will allow it to tilt forwards and backwards and that will let me change the height of the steering rod to make it more comfortable. So it was back onto the pipe bender to create the bend in the stands. And back onto the art droid plasma cutter to create the plates that have got this curved slot on them that will allow me to clamp these stands in place at the right height. I think I'm going to have to call these plates the Happy Cyclops plate. I tack welded these plates to the frame to allow me to give it a test and see how it's going to perform. One thing that was pretty obvious when I was rotating the uh, bar around was that it did catch on this curved slot thing. That's not going to be any good. So as a cheap way out of this, I turned down the bolts at the part where they went through the slot. So I've got one plate in position. The trouble is the frame is tapered, so I'm using this long M8 threaded rod to hold the second plate in position before I tack weld it. The supporting bars on top are going to have this plate with the two holes in it and on top of there there's going to be a pillow block bearing that's going to support the steering rod and it will allow it to rotate around the bars by this highlighted bit here. So after a bit more plasma cutting I've got this assembly here just giving it a test fit to make sure that these bits are going to rotate around that round bar in the centre there. The pillow block bearings held in place by some M10 threaded bar and I'm just getting the length here and marking it so that I can cut it to the right length. I cut both studs by hand in the vise and cleaned up the rough cut left behind by the hacksaw with a file so I can easily get the nuts on. Then both M10 studs were welded into place to secure them. So the pillow block is mounted on this plate with the two M10 studs and can rotate around this bar. And this was welded to the top of the two bars that are going to be used to move forwards and backwards to adjust the height. And that seems to work reasonably well. Now it's time to weld both plates in place. When you're starting to weld they do tell you the first thing to do is get comfortable. So that seems to be the steering done now. It works pretty well and I'm not sure whether I'm going to need to replace that universal joint because it's a bit of a cheap one, but I'll worry about that later on. Okay, that didn't turn out too badly. The next thing to do is going to be getting the electronics and the lights and the electrical stuff and batteries and things sorted out. The uh, steering is going to be done with an Arduino and it's going to have an angle sensor on there so I can control the difference in speed between the two tracks. That should be quite interesting to get going. I'm looking forward to that. Alright, please join me for the next episode. Bye.